Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, today what we're going to be doing is grading some S-Log3 footage. We're going to be exploring three different ways. Uh, two are color management options and one is using a lookup table. And uh, we're going to try to do this as quickly as possible. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And also, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tony Day. The first thing I'm going to do here is illustrate why some people struggle with log footage in general. Regardless of the program that you use, here we're, we're in DaVinci Resolve, but what happens is that uh, people often start by just adding some contrast to get it how they like it, and then add saturation and get a little annoyed that it doesn't really look right, um, especially the color. This is using S Gamut 3, which a lot of people tend to struggle with and think that the color science out of the camera is bad. This is shot with the FX3, and I usually shoot in S Gamut 3 instead of S Gamut 3 Cine because the gamut is larger. But the problem that a lot of people have with S Gamut 3 is that it just doesn't look right uh, when you look at it out of the box by just doing something like this. This is because S Gamut 3 is not with the same primaries as Rec. 709. So what we need to do is get this image into Rec. 709 before we can really see what the colors are supposed to look like on a Rec. 709 monitor, okay? And there's really easy ways to do this. Uh, we're going to use a LUT and we're going to use two color management options to do so. For a lot of people, working in S-Log3 is fine. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of it, so instead I opt for what I'm used to which is RE log c or several other color spaces. But because there's a LUT that is included with DaVinci Resolve that is for RE Alexa log c to Rec. 709, we're going to use that lookup table. How we're going to get into RE log c is using a color space transform node. We're going to drop this here and we're going to choose S Gamut 3, S log 3. We're going to go into RE Alexa and RE log c. Tone mapping, we're going to hit none. And then we're going to create a few nodes in the middle, and here on the end, we are going to use that LUT. Okay? Now when we throw the LUT in, you're going to see that we have a transform that looks a lot more like what we want. This LUT tends to work really well with most footage I've fed into it, regardless of the camera, as long as you go from the uh, camera's acquisition color space and gamma into RE log C and RE Alexa color space first. Okay, so let's go ahead and label these LUT and CST for color space transform. Now, what we're going to do is adjust the exposure. We'll have a little brighter look. This is more of a, let's say, a cleaner video or a commercial kind of look here. And with that exposure, we're then going to do a white balance. Now in this shot here, you'll notice that there is no white or gray card. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to go to our gray card, hit control one, and we're just going to do a quick white balance using the medicine dropper on that. Okay. And now we've got our balance. We'll copy and paste that over here. And now we have converted to Rec. 709, and we also have our exposure and white balance. Now at this point, you can add whatever flavors or whatever you want, whatever look you want. So I'm just going to quickly do a look that I tend to see people trying to achieve uh, in general. Then we're gonna add coolness to the shadows by pulling teal. Here, we're going to do a luminance saturation curve. We're going to pull a little bit of desaturation into the shadows, pull the skin tones back up, and then desaturate the highlights. Then we're going to take all of these and we're going to throw them into a compound node. Call that look. All right, now let's look at what we did. This is before, after, before, after. This is before the look, after look, before, after. You can do whatever looks you want at this point. It's really up to you. Um, this is just a, a small adjustment here to get uh, more of what I tend to see. Usually people like to get the greens 
warmer and uh, desaturation in the highlights and yellows not so yellow but a little bit more toward the orange so that's all I did here but with that we have a look and we have a rec 709 conversion that's pretty easy uh, to do the next method we're going to use is using resolve color management we're going to go over here into our settings we're going to go into DaVinci wire GB color managed we're going to use a custom setup because if you like working in RE log C you're going to want to do this uh, so you can decide what timeline color space you want to use. For the input color space, we're going to select S Gamut 3, S Log 3. Timeline color space, we're going to go into RE Log C. And then for the output color space, we're going to use Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Uh, this is going to be graded on a Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 monitor, so that is what we're picking here. If you have an sRGB monitor, you can select sRGB, grade in sRGB, and before your output, you can change it to Rec. 709. But we are going to be working in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And we are going to, for the input DRT, we're just gonna hit none here. Uncheck, use color space aware, and we're gonna hit save. When we do this method, all of the transforms are gonna be done under the hood. So all we're left with is the grades that we want to do for our shots. Now we're gonna do basically what we did before. We're gonna do some exposure and a white balance. All right, now we have our exposure and our white balance out of the way, we can do whatever look we want. So let's go ahead and do a similar look like what we did last time. Let's look at what we did. This is before the look. This is after, before, after, before, after. This is before all of the things we did. Here's after, before, after, before, after. Now, of course, there's a lot more things that we can do if we want to add something like, uh, you know, a vignette to make it look a little bit more dramatic. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and really with color management, it makes it a little bit easier because a lot of the work is being done as far as the LUT that you usually have on the end or a color space transform. You don't really have to worry about those things. Um, you can have a much cleaner node tree like you see here. Uh, that's a vignette. And then if we want to add grain, we can go ahead and put some film grain in here. like that okay and now we let's say we're done okay pretty easy to uh, get whatever look you want using either of these methods and s gamut 3 uh, is very very easy to work with as long as you are um, using these kinds of methods uh, if you're trying to manually get s gamut 3 into Rec. 709, it can be very difficult. S Gamut 3 Cine has Rec. 709, or at least similar to Rec. 709 primaries, so that's why a lot of people like it more. But uh, really, S Gamut 3 is just as easy as S Gamut 3 Cine to work with, uh, as long as you're not trying to manually do everything. So that's not the only way to do a transform. And if you notice, the transforms were very similar between the RE LUT workflow and the RCM workflow where the Rec. 709 output was very, very similar. But what if we want to get a different Rec. 709 look using another method? What we're gonna do is we're going to use ACES color management. And in ACES color management, you'll see that the output will look a bit different. In the ACES input device transform, we're gonna pick Sony S-Log3 S Gamut 3. On the output device transform, we're gonna pick Rec. 709. We're gonna leave this the way it is, and we're gonna hit save. Now, you see right there, the output is different. There's quite a bit more contrast in the ACES output, and there is 
a kind of a look that has a bit more grit to it or a bit of a harsher look in general. We're going to do a few adjustments to get it more uh, to my liking. We're going to start with adjusting the exposure and contrast, but uh, there's a trick to ACES to kind of relax the uh, high contrast that the, the initial transform tends to have, especially in the midtone areas. And there's an easy way to do it. You can do it using uh, curves, but I've found it's a lot easier using a trick. Um, first thing is that if you change the contrast like this, you're going to be affecting quite a bit of uh, the values. So we're not going to do it like that. We're going to actually change the pivot point to 0.18. When we do this, you'll notice that the contrast behaves in a very different way. And when we change this, you're not going to be affecting the shadows as much. You're going to be affecting these midtones and the higher tones, but mostly the midtones. And this will help get more uh, of a less contrasty look in our skin tones. Okay, just so you can get an idea of how that goes. Okay, so we're going to go around here. Then we're going to drop our shadows because we want to get a bit more contrast in those shadows for this shot. What you'll also notice about aces, even when you adjust the exposure and the contrast and that kind of thing, the shadows also have kind of a, almost like a, a film-like roll-off uh, into desaturation in the shadows, and also there, there appears to be a bit of a desaturation in the highlights as well. So this is essentially the look that the ACES team has decided is a good initial uh, Rec. 709 conversion. Um, you can of course change that if you'd like, but generally speaking I'll use ACES if I want to have like a grittier film-like look. And then for other video projects that I usually want to have the face looking a bit, uh, let's say, less textured, I'll use a the RCM or the LUT uh, from ARRI. Okay? Uh, just so if you wanted to know why I might choose either one. The next thing we need to do is our white balance and um, I'm going to use a little bit of a different method just to show it to you here. We're going to use a power window around the gray card and I have found that in ACES uh, the white balance tools like temperature and tint don't work as I would expect as much as the offset does. I think the offset usually keeps the uh, tones a little bit more like they're supposed to look when we do the white balance change. So what we're going to do is get gray to go toward the middle of our vector scope. We can enhance how it looks by using a 2x zoom just like here and then also increasing the saturation to 100. So you can see that ball right there. We're going to move it toward the center. We're going to use offset to do that just like this. Okay. And now we have gray going where it's supposed to go. And we'll make the saturation back down to 50. Copy and paste this to our shot. Call that white balance. Okay. All right. Let's see what we did. This is before, after, before, after. Okay. Now what we're going to do is add our look. Now because ACES tends to have a natural desaturation in the shadows and in the highlights, I'm not going to add our luminance saturation curve. So we'll go ahead and add a, a vignette like what we had before, make it look a little bit more uh, dramatic. And then what we're also going to do is to decrease the texture a little bit, we're going to pull down the midtone detail like that. And then to counterbalance the lack of sharpness, after doing that, we'll just bring back a little bit of the sharpness there. Okay, so you can see that softens. So we go before, after, before, after. So it's a little bit of a softening effect. Then we're going to go ahead and add some film grain over the top. Something that you'll notice about... Uh, using ACES is that grain effects can be very intense by comparison to other uh, methods. So what we're going to do here is just pull back the intensity of that a bit. We'll go to about a 0.35 and that usually is about on par to what I see in the normal methods. We're going to take all these, throw them into a compound node. We'll call that texture 
All right, let's see what we did. This is before. This is the corrections. And then there's the look. This is with corrections. Look. Corrections. Look. And that's really all for this video. I just wanted to show you several ways that you can work with your S-Log3 footage. You can do the same thing with S-Gamut3 Cine. I found that S-Gamut3, because it's the larger color gamut, tends to work better with uh, color managed workflows where you're working more in log, uh, like the ACES color space, which is really, really big. Uh, S-Gamut3 tends to work better in there, and that's just not me saying it. Um, it's also in the Sony white papers that uh, S-Gamut3 works a lot better for ACES workflows than S Gamut 3 Cine. Um, so I just use S Gamut 3 all the time and I end up with very, very good results uh, very easily. And I do recommend that you should, if you are not used to using all three of these methods, at least try them all out. Try different timeline color spaces and gammas if they work better for you and, and your purposes, you can try using those. I found that ACES and RCM tend to be for me, the easiest and fastest ways to get looks uh, without really having to try that hard. So I do hope that you learned something in this video. Please like and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more like it. And also please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tony Day and supporting my work. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.